telecast from Philadelphia between number one Connecticut and number four Villanova is available on ESPN HD presented by Dish Network. Tonight at the Wachovia Center, we expect the largest crowd ever to watch a college basketball game in the state of Pennsylvania on hand to watch one of the most anticipated games of the season. It's hard to be the best and harder to beat the best. UConn has been at or near the top for a decade. And they're number one again. Powerful, intimidating. They're good and they know it. Not too many people like UConn. If you hit UConn, you love UConn. We have a giant bullseye on our back, you know. They're trying to, everybody's trying to come and get at us. People want to beat us. Everyone wants to beat a team that knocks off the number one team in the country. Numbers don't matter to us. Doesn't matter. We play hard together, smart, and we play with pride. Confident, experienced, and fast, Villanova doesn't care about them. They care about being the best. Everybody was just, like, pumped up about the game over campus. It would be a tremendous crowd. Sold out Wachovia Center. Coach won't even have to say anything for his pregame talk. Tonight, it's the battle to stay number one and beat number one. Presented by Bud Light, and that label just might not do this matchup justice tonight. This is about as big as it gets in mid-February. Two of the top four teams in the nation playing with so much at stake. In the short run, first place in the Big East standings, and perhaps down the road, a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Villanova picked to win the Big East in the preseason coaches poll with Connecticut. Number two, they are currently tied for first place with West Virginia, and the Huskies and Wildcats will play again in Connecticut in 13 days. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to an electric atmosphere here in Philadelphia. Sean McDonough along with Jay Billis and Bill Raftery. We are very excited to be here for two of the best teams in the country, each red hot. Connecticut riding its second 11-game winning streak of the season, led by that powerful front line. Well, the number one team in the country, and in my judgment, the best team in the country. For the fifth year in a row, they lead the nation in block shots, and the guy that is their potential personified is Rudy Gay. People talk about him having all the tools, and he does. He's an incredible athlete, incredibly skilled. People question his aggressiveness, but he's been unbelievably aggressive over the last three games, and this team is starting to take off. That big front court that can block shots and rebound. Hilton Armstrong, one of the most improved players in the country. Josh Boone, the defensive player of the year in the Big East, and it's all started by Marcus Williams, their point guard, who gets it all going. And while UConn is big and powerful, Villanova is one of the quickest teams in the country, playing much of the year with a four-guard lineup. The good news for them tonight, they do expect to have the services of Mike Nardi, one of those four guards who has missed the last two games due to tonsillitis. They'll have to use their quickness to their advantage tonight. It's embarrassing how he's in love with the big guys. Give me the <laughs> guards the outstanding penetrators the ability to find people knock down threes they have a middle game and they have that cheer drop and many should fall the same day Sean McDonough those four guards combined for 79 percent of Villanova's scoring and now a look at the ING star watch two great candidates for Big East player of the year honors well first with Rudy Gay over his last three games over 20 points 10 rebounds shooting over 50 percent of the field uh, from the field the eye of the tiger and Randy Foy, three assists to go with the five rebounds and 20 points. Tough competitor. Gets by people and creates, Sean. Marcus Williams, Craig Ostry, Gay, Josh Boone, and Hilton Armstrong, the familiar five for Connecticut. Lowry, Foy, Ray, no Nardi in the starting lineup. Dante Cunningham instead and Will Sheridan, but we do expect to see Nardi. And Connecticut dressed in the road blue on the tip. Mike Kitts, Reggie Greenwood, Carl Hess, an outstanding officiating crew. Dante Cunningham, a steal, and then a whistle. And I'm not sure why. Just when Jay Wright's team was about to get a fast break opportunity, officials stopped it. Well, the shot clock had not gone on, and you're right. Straighten it out later. There was no shot clock violation that was going to occur, and you take away the ability in the open floor. And Mike Kitts explaining to Jay, unfortunately, a malfunction early. Might as well jump it up again and go 
20 minutes and start over if they're going to take away a steal that was going the other way. Well, it sounded to me like the whistle blew well after Cunningham had the ball, so the shot clock malfunction should not have been an issue during Connecticut's possession. You would think if they can get the shot clock working, the ball would belong to Villanova. Uh, the, the, the Jays rice rice smile. They made start it over a redo. That's the only way to do it is to jump it up again. Why is that? Because if the sh if the, the clock didn't start right and they're going to take away the first play of the game, you might as well start over again. Well, it, it's 1851. Uh, that was a quick minute. Yeah, that's nine. obviously a malfunction yeah. too. They have yeah. reset the clock to 20 minutes, and they may start the game over again, as Jay suggests. And I'm not surprised that Jay would suggest that, since you and I have both played golf with Jay, and he is Mr. <laughs> Mulligan. He, he does like to start over. He asked for a on many a whole. Time. But you know what? I, I disagree with the fact. I think Villanova should be awarded the ball. I do too. And then you straighten it out after that. Take the amount of time off the clock and make that judgment. Connecticut's possession was not affected by the shot clock malfunction, and they were well under 35 seconds in that possession. And as a result, they will give Villanova the ball, and they've taken 10 seconds off the game clock. No argument from Jim Calhoun, the Hall of Fame coach in his 20th season as head coach at the University of Connecticut. Here's Kyle Lowry, the point guard, has been outstanding, particularly in the two games without Nardi, averaging more than 20 per game. I show them both cup start. Minute, minute. Foy, their leading scorer, the tough runner with Hilton Armstrong lunging out at him. And that's their game. Don't get too close. Also, offensive rebound will become important for Villanova as they attract the shot blockers. And that's the way you beat UConn, is you spread them out and you drive them. Villanova going to try to get those matchups to work in their favor. Here's Marcus Williams, the outstanding point guard, leading the Big East in assists at more than eight per game. Armstrong rebounded his miss. Now a held ball is Sheridan, and it goes over to Villanova. Jay Wright said before the game he wants his team to use its quickness to its advantage. He doesn't want to get in many of those types of situations where Connecticut can set up in the half court, get those big people in the low block, and run their offense. He'd like to press and trap and not make it a half court game. Just changing the D will help them as well, Sean. One of the things, different looks. Don't let them settle in, UConn. Alan Ray off a poor shooting performance Saturday in their win at DePaul. Ray was just two for 14 in that game, but he's one of the leading scorers in the conference. Down to eight to shoot for Villanova. Foy guarded by Gay. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that'll bring a smile, huh? Really Gay did everything but block the shot. He was right in his grill. The ball came down wet. Jay Wright also said we have to make shots, and that certainly counts as making a shot. But there's his concern. The offensive glass for Connecticut, Boone on the second try, has the Huskies on the board. Now that's why it's important they change the look outside. Make UConn use a lot of clock because they'll take advantage size-wise and body-wise, push people underneath. Lowry, the sophomore, one of 16 candidates for the Bob Cousy Award, is the best point guard in the country. They find Will Sheridan, and that's his shot on the baseline. Well, talk about the unsung hero for this team. He defends, he rebounds, and UConn cannot allow him to score. The crowd, better than 20,000, engaged early. Rudy Gay quiets them with a deep three. <laughs> Uh, you alluded to his ability earlier, uh, Jay. This is an outstanding talent, and for some reason, he's rising, raising up his level of play. Well, he's really starting to perform. He's playing with more aggressiveness, and when he gets going early, this UConn team is even more difficult to beat. Williams went for the steal and didn't get it. Ray missed a three. Shared in the offensive rebound, and the shot blocked from behind by Rudy Gay. Connecticut on its way to leading the nation in block shots as a team for the fifth year in a row. Moon rejected by Dante Cunningham, the very athletic freshman. That was a heck of a play by Williams. Where the stop and go, the hesitation move. Pretty. Boy, had trouble with the dribble. Lowry to the rescue, still 20 to shoot for Villanova. Boy, the intensity defensively on every possession. Lowry bumped by Austri, and the whistle sounds. Craig Austri called for the first foul of the ball game. 
The freshman who was started mostly because of Jim Calhoun's superstition. Now that Marcus Williams is back, you would think Austria wouldn't start, but as Jim Calhoun says, hey, twice this year we've won 11 in a row, I'm going to leave him in the starting lineup. Well, plus, it also keeps Austria in it. I think Austria, when Williams came back, started to lose a little confidence looking over at the mm -hmm. bench. If he happened to make a mistake, he knew when Williams wasn't there, he was staying in the game. There was nobody else to put in. And of course, you've got Anderson waiting with a a bated breath over there. Great deep shooter as Adrian comes in now, Sean. Jeff Adrian, the freshman, power forward. Lowry makes both. He was five for five from the line Saturday against DePaul. And Villanova with a four point lead. Three and a half minutes gone by here in Philadelphia. So on the shot clock in to see how long they take. You've got them take them long, huh? Yay, open for three. Long rebound out to Austria. And those are the ones Villanova has to get. Good D by Lowry, denying the pass into Josh Boone. 31 to shoot, nearly a full clock for the Huskies. Jim Calhoun. 477 wins at Connecticut. You can add the 248 at Northeastern. He's 16th all time in total wins. Move past the legendary Ray Meyer. Austria, the runner, banked it in. How about that little kiss? A little off balance, but again, Jay, inability to squeeze the rebound. Villanova's had a couple of opportunities now. They have not done a good job. Well, if it's long or it's loose, Villanova has got to get it. Anything closer to the basket is going to be advantage UConn. Lowry uses a Sheridan oh. screen beautifully. How about the way they lifted everybody? Nobody at home, and that's something you have to do. Raise the big guys so they can't inhibit. Well, Lowry is going to be a pro. What a terrific player that doesn't get near the credit he deserves. Look at this there hustle again. Uh -huh. He's what starting happened? to get that credit. Kyle Lowry and the Villanova Wildcats off to a good start in front of the big home crowd here in Philadelphia. from Siemens can be found everywhere by helping to make water more pure, buildings more efficient, facilities more modern, communications better integrated, and energy more reliable. We're turning dreams into reality. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by refreshingly smooth Bud Light, always worth it, and in part by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Welcome back to Philadelphia. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Villanova with a four-point lead. The last time Villanova defeated the number one team in the country, it was the Yukon Huskies back in 1995. Kerry Kittles was the show. He had 37 points. The run out there for the jam after the block, and Villanova hammered Connecticut on its home court, winning by 23. Of course, the most notable win in the history of the program against the number one, one of their four 
all time against top ranked teams. They're four and 14 in their history against the top ranked team in the country. Engineered by that man, Roly Massimino, as they beat Georgetown for the national championship. How about him now back in coaching at Northwood? Of course, that game against Villanova alluded there. NCAA champion. He looks great. The 10. You don't like the shirt, though. Well, what's the deal with that shirt? He looks like Tom Jones. He said well, it costs do, more than. Whoa, he, said whoa, it, whoa, whoa. he said it costs more than your wardrobe, though. Well, that's true. Uh, that's that's not great, hard to do. Great to see him back. Nice inside screen. Was that your imitation of Bill Raftery <laughs> singing Tom Jones songs? That's Rather, a little bit of Raff in that Tom Jones imitation. I'm a little better around midnight than he is at 7 o'clock. But, uh, you know, speaking of Roley, he and Jay are such great pals. And it's wonderful to see him back on occasion here on campus. Jay Wright. Jay Wright. Thank you Jay very Billis. much. Or Jay Billis. That's true. Jay Wright, a former Roley Massimino assistant. Fouls on Randy Foy, his first. Denham Brown off the bench. He's not shot the ball well this year. 38% overall and just 30% from three. And he missed his first opportunity. Jason Frazier off the bench for Villanova. That's his first attempt. Rescued by Alan Ray. Now you mentioned Frazier. His game is all the defense, the shot blocking, and getting down the floor. Is uh, the coach enjoying it? Why not? He'll be doing that next year. Nearly a steal by Ray. Marcus Williams got it back. Now Rudy Gay, nice pass down to the baseline. Adrian was surrounded. And then Gay lost the handle. Ray waits for some help. Alan Ray, the senior. That's the game. Drive, draw, and find somebody on the perimeter. Connecticut's got to slow it down, Sean. They're not taking advantage of their power. Well, Villanova doing just what they wanted to do was get this game into an unusual and unorthodox tempo for UConn. Ray's three-point woes continue. One for nine Saturday, two for 13 in the previous two games, and a couple of misses tonight. And then, as you say, Bill, perhaps a bit too quickly, Denham Brown and the Huskies lose it over the baseline. Well, if you start going too fast, you lose that power advantage. Mm -hmm. You want to get down. If there's nothing easy on a quick strike, you need to reset and run a set and get the ball inside where you've got an advantage. What happens now, if this continues, Connecticut will be forced to play smaller, which is right up Villanova's alley. So take advantage of the power people while you got them out there. Well, Connecticut is big and powerful, but they can also get out and run in transition. They put on a clinic in the second half Saturday night at Seton Hall on the fast break. Foy missed a three, shared and tipped into the corner. That was their biggest win in a Big East game in their history, 99-57. Jim Calhoun said that was the best game we played since the 2004 championship season. Rashad Anderson off the bench with a deep three. The silencer. I mean, that kid is amazing. He's just instant offense. He's conscience free when he comes into the game. Best sixth man in America in the opinion of Coach Calhoun and it's hard to argue he leads all players nationally in points per game among those who have not started a game. He's at 14 per game and there's Lowry right down the middle not intimidated by those big shot blockers. Well, Sean, he knows how to take the body away of the big people gets an angle drifts into the shot blocker. What a powerful penetrator and then finesse at the end. I think Kyle Lowry's got game changing ability. And for a steal from Anderson didn't get it. Mike Nardi is at the table to check in for the first time. And here's that man now switching the looks. Marcus Williams a nice move to the goal. It's almost like you can't rattle Marcus Williams. He plays with a great demeanor and I love his change of pace change of direction and great strength. He's not going to beat you with his quickness. He beats you with his strength and his smarts. Are you suggesting he doesn't hear Jim sometimes. <laughs> It is a good demeanor. Williams at 15 points and 10 assists Saturday night in the win over Seton Hall. It was three for three from three point range. Ray traveled. Tried to get the dribble down before he landed, but could not. So here comes Mike Nardi, who sat out their win last Tuesday night against St. Joseph's at the Palestra. And their victory against DePaul. He wasn't even in the building Tuesday night. He was in the University Health Center with tonsillitis. He traveled to Chicago, but did not feel well and did not play Saturday. And he, before the game, he was shooting and shooting well. Said he felt good, but you said he looked terrible out there. I mean, deathly sick. On Saturday, Chicago, he looked yeah. much better tonight. Mm -hmm. He skipped their shoot around on Saturday morning before the DePaul game. The crowd thought Gay walked twice. His shot was blocked by Cunningham. 
Lowry bodied up by Gay and finally the whistle. They're allowing a lot of chest bumping. And finally Reggie Greenwood said a little too much chest bumping and Rudy Gay called for the foul his first. And Sean, did you notice sorry Jay the shot he ended up with he knows enough never to go too close if they're going to block it even though it's knocked off with the foul he's very intelligent with his bounce. Well and that's the matchup they have to drive every time they get the ball whether it's Randy Foy or Kyle Lowry Foy who had the ball last time Gay was guarding him on that little ball screen Gay is starting to look for the screen I think Foy can turn it down and go the other way and really take advantage of, of Rudy Gay out on the perimeter and they're using Boone's guy to screen Cunningham and bringing the bigs away just a little bit Sheridan guarded by Armstrong 20 seconds to shoot for Villanova leading by three more than eight minutes gone by and the Cats turn it over here's Austria leading the Huskies Nice stop and go move and a duck by Armstrong. Uh, tough to get bodies when they push it that quickly and get a good roll. Well you almost feel like you can take a shot and if you miss it it's, almost, it's an assist. Mm -hmm. Five offensive rebounds for Connecticut. Good kick. And Nardi's first shot short. Rudy Gay the rebound now a chance for the lead for Connecticut. When Anderson is in the game, you really have to fan out and transition and find him. Gay went by Lowry. The nifty pull up. Count the basket. And then I believe Josh Boone will be called for the foul for throwing Nardi to the deck. And that's how competitive Nardi is. The sticks that body and checks this guy out. First foul on Boone. They had a timeout. Lowry terrific early, but the Huskies have battled back to take a one point lead. Yeah, 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 yeah. First Valentine's dinner? Definitely. Ta-da. Oh, he's good. A gift from Kay Jewelers means every diamond is hand-selected to match beautifully. She'll absolutely love it. Remember when we were like that? I sure do. Every kiss begins with K. You think plans. Office Depot thinks paper. You think locations. Office Depot thinks laptops. You think how to build your business. Office Depot thinks how to supply it. And now through Saturday, get 20% off on all Christopher Lowell brand furniture and chairs. So hurry in. You take care of business. Office Depot takes care of you. Taking care of business. There is a child in the car. Samuel L. Jackson gives the performance of a lifetime. I will not rest until I find your son. Julianne Moore is superb. What is it, they have Cody? In the movie critics call a shocking psychological thriller. There's a whole lot about that night we don't know. Freedom Land is heart-stopping, riveting, compelling. No! Four stars with enough twists and turns to leave you breathless. We are going to find him. Freedom Land. Rated R. Opens everywhere Friday. Right now at Red Lobster, choose your two favorites from five of our most irresistible jumbo shrimp dishes. Like jumbo scampi, hand-breaded crunch fried, or our new decadent lobster and crab stuffed shrimp. That's jumbo shrimp only at Red Lobster. A 6-0 run for Connecticut, and the Huskies have taken their first lead of the ball game. Time now for ESPNU's Pride of the Program. In the spotlight tonight, Northwestern. One of the NFL's greatest legends originally came to Northwestern to play basketball. Otto Graham, the point guard, was a two-time All-American on the hardwood in Evanston, Illinois, and graduated as the Northwestern Wildcats' all-time leading scorer. But a lot of people didn't know that when Otto Graham arrived at Northwestern in 1940, he was on a basketball scholarship. His football career took off only after his legend was born on the intramural football fields in Evanston. Great little I, anecdote. Bud Grant's another guy. I think he played for the Lakers, the old Minnesota mm -hmm. coach. Well, Otto Graham was in college a little bit after you, but do you uh, I remember do remember that point? I sure do. Kyle Lowry got called for That's a travel. That's a change. That's what the bigs do. Jay Wright didn't agree with the call. I don't comment much on walks by Villanova. 
First Bill worked the controversial game against North Carolina in the NCAA tournament last year in which Villanova was eliminated. Nardi and Lowry combined for a steal. Well, Mike Nardi. You've really got to be strong with the ball against Villanova because their guards are not only quick, they are strong as well. I see, that's where Ray's got to mix his game up. Don't be settling for the jumper. Get on the board, get your confidence. He can go into the... Wow. Yeah. Here's Sean Anderson, the response. And you're right, Bill. You know, Jay Wright talks about we need to make shots, and Alan Ray is one of those players he needs to make shots, and we've seen it this year. He's a streaky shooter, and right now he's on a bad streak. Mm -hmm. Well, a guy on a good streak is Anderson for UConn. He's looking like the Rashad Anderson of 2004 in the NCAA tournament where he and never missed. He's on a four-year streak, though, right? Shooting that jump shot. Got to get out of the lane. Ray back to Nardi. He's well off as well. Then Hilton Armstrong rips down the rebound midway through the first half. Connecticut by four. Anderson feeling it. Along with it, Sheridan leaps for the rebound. You see Williams check out there. Sheridan likes that shot. Line drive that time. Boone deflected it off for Anderson. Nice screen by Armstrong. And Williams wow. used it to bank it home. <laughs> I don't think he meant that though, Joe, with the smile he came away from. That little kiss inadvertent. 11 unanswered points for Connecticut. They're the top ranked team in the country at 22 and 1. The only loss to Marquette has the lead by six. Boy, nice. the beauty of Rashad Anderson, when he catches it, he looks at the rim right away, and that gets the defense off balance. Jay ha he's got great shot credibility. They have to respect it. You know, he's healthy, too. I mean, what a difference a year makes, but uh, they get it to him, and he's got the free range. Jim Calhoun uh, takes advantage of that ability to shoot. And with two three-pointers tonight, Rashad Anderson has gone by Ben Gordon and is number one all time in three point field goals made. And when you look at that list and you're at the top of it, you're ahead of some pretty impressive company. Well, it's not just a lot of threes, it's a lot of W's with that group. That has been a group of winners. Jim Calhoun said this morning, over four years, Rashad Anderson with those threes has had more daggers, has delivered more devastating mm -hmm. blows to the opponent with those threes than anybody else we've had. And quiet, unassuming, just does his job, and he guards, by the way, which is overlooked. And that's why Ray may be struggling just a little bit. Boone called for a second foul as he got tangled with Jason Frazier at the side of the line. And Frazier is a guy you don't really need to foul because he is not the same athlete that he used to be. He's still effective, but he can't play the minutes and he's not going to be able to go by you because of his knees. And it's nice they're screening, though, keeping Boone active. That caused the problem. And there is a shot made by Alan Ray. Maybe that'll be the one that gets him going. It's a deep two. It ends the 11 0 Connecticut run. One, two, two, three quarter court pressure. And Frazier just a little bit late. They've been trying to get Williams the ball in the middle of that pressure, Jay. See if they can turn it into a three on two. Boone on the bench with the two fouls. Williams, Adrian, Anderson, Armstrong, and Brown for Jim Calhoun. The ball kicked with 16 seconds to go on the shot clock. Big Monday continues. Two more games on ESPN and ESPN2. After us, 9 Eastern, Kansas takes on Oklahoma State. And then at midnight Eastern on ESPN2, two, two of the top scorers in the WAC, Paul Millsap and Nick Fazekas, lead their teams, Louisiana Tech and Nevada, respectively. Uh, Millsap can rebound, too. Yeah, he's looking to be the game. first guy ever to lead the nation in rebounding three years in a row. How about this? The junk rebounds are hurting them now, Sean. Yeah, Sheridan and Frazier did a great job defensively, blocked the shot, but the ball wound up on the floor, and Jeff Adrian dropped it in. Now you expect UConn to get the rebounds that are up high. It's when they get the ones that are on the floor that must drive Jay Wright crazy. Uh, same thing down there. They got Adrian, the same kind of play. The activity of the big guys has caused problems for UConn. Adrian's basket means that seven different Huskies have scored already. Well, much of the greatness of Jim Calhoun's team, quality depth. They go to the bench to replace Boone, and you bring in Adrian, who's been tremendous all year. Adrian is just relentless. He is long armed. He's got a wingspan about 7'5, and he uses it. A nice play. A little flare to the corner for the inbounder, Ray. Come up short. Now, Frazier can do some damage here, Jay. Working on Adrian. Awkward shot. Never got up to the rim. See, I think he has a harder time scoring over you, so you just don't want to give him an angle. 
Williams dumped it off. Adrian blocked. Boy, Sheridan not intimidating. Intimidated, I should say, nor is Ray as he went right at Hilton Armstrong and Villanova scratching back. Oh, they're so clever at the rim, the perimeter guys. Look at this hustle defensively by Lowry. And Lowry comes up with it and looks to push. Three Huskies behind the play. Ray for three. Frazier the rebound. Adrian still behind the play. Foy bumped on the drive by Denham Brown. Tremendous atmosphere in the game, living up to the hype. Back and forth they go. UConn a four-point lead. Here's Dave Repson. Thank you, Sean. Time for a Sports Center 30 and 30 update. Oklahoma State head coach Eddie Sutton has been cited for driving under the influence. Now, under Oklahoma law, that can encompass a broad range of substances. Results of a blood test will be known in six to eight weeks. He'll take a medical leave for the rest of the season from the Oklahoma State team. And in battle, Indiana coach Mike Davis insinuated Monday he's not a good fit at IU, saying, quote, they need to have somebody that's played here so they can embrace him. Details on Sports Center, 11 Eastern, ESPN News, anytime. We'll get you back out to the game next. Out here, I can take on anything. Any car, any driver, any track. Peak Global Lifetime Antifreeze can protect any engine in any make, any model, any time. It's the only antifreeze backed by a lifetime guarantee. Just flush it, fill it, and forget it. I'm tough enough to take on anything and fast enough to get away with it. Get the only antifreeze that's guaranteed for life. Peak Global Lifetime. When you peak, you win. Sloppy defense. We got it, we got it. Weak screens. Step out. Bad passes. Hey, give me the ball. Now, Bobby Knight sees who can pass the ultimate test. Good job. 16 students. I want all of you to grow four inches. One walk on the spot. If your mother comes in here, you're going to listen to your mother or to me? That's right. Get ready for Night School. Premier Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Hey, you're done shopping for car insurance? Yes. Honey, did they compare this rate to other companies? Uh, no. How about service? No. Hey, think easier. With one call to 1-800-PROGRESSIVE, a licensed professional will help you make the decision that's right for you. Ten years ago, it started with a click. Progressive made car insurance easier by putting it online. They were the first. And 29 million quotes later, they're still doing it better than anyone else. So see how Progressive Direct changed car insurance forever. And it all started with a click. Welcome back to Philadelphia. Sean McDonough with Bill Raftery and Jay Billis, Connecticut, with a four-point lead against this pesky and swarming Villanova defense. Well, the defense is getting steals, and when you pass the ball ahead, you have got to be careful to protect the ball. You cannot show it right here. Denham Brown doesn't protect the ball against the back flow. The defense coming back when he puts it outside of his body and doesn't shield it with his body, that is ripe for a steal. Kyle Lowry right on top of it, leading the Big East in steals, and that is why UConn has got to protect the basketball. And how about the pass he made right after that gave it up gave an angle for Ray to go to the 10 with that little left hand six steals already for Villanova it's their ball deflected out of bounds by Rashad Anderson where the guy that is guarding the inbounds man has really got to guard underneath the basket and take away that cross-court angled pass so this is a tough spot to take it out right now Sean right, to make it easier Boy got it into Lowry with Ray Frazier and Sheridan for the most part they have not used the four guard lineup they played with three guards and two big people Be interesting to see how Connecticut matches up if they do go to four guards Lowry drains the second Villanova three they're now two for eight from beyond the arc you can't go underneath on him either a lot of teams have backed off him he'll punish you Williams trying to answer he doesn't shoot many threes, and a foul called 
on Jason Frazier. Williams has attempted only 25 threes all year. Uh, St. Joe's did this against them, and he knocked down the deep shot. You know, just don't test him. He is some competitor. Foul on Frazier, his first, and the second team foul against Villanova. Officials, for the most part, have let them play, and the fans are appreciating that. A shot, Anderson, a miss. Sheridan, the rebound. Now a chance to recapture the lead for Villanova with under seven minutes left in the half. I think they need to go back to that ball screen action. That's been very good to Villanova. Lowry hit on the arm by Marcus Williams. He thought he had the ball. Reggie Greenwood did not concur. It's the first personal on Marcus, the junior from Los Angeles. You know, every coach in the country wants a kid who can put it on the floor and beat you, whether it's the end of a shot clock or in big situations. That's what makes Villanova so hard to guard. You may play good D, but they know how to turn corners, uh, get by you, stick the head and shoulder, and do some damage. The other thing they can do is make challenge shots. I mean, how many players in America can make a shot with the defense right in their face? Villanova's got four of them. I'm thinking of Reddick while you said that, though. How about him? Yeah, but Redd Reddick's one. These He's, guys have yeah. a legit four guys that can make a challenge shot. Well, you must have had fun watching uh, Anna Marson as well this weekend. He, the kid's an unbelievable player. He's just got a great motor and an ultra competitor. Mm -hmm. But he, he did say that this Reddick comparison is kind of wearing on him a little bit. Reddick gets 35, and everybody expects if you don't match it, you don't have a good game. That was interesting. One out of two for Lowry. He has a game high 10 points. The game tied at 23, under six and a half minutes oh, to go. Foy stripped Williams, and Williams fouled him. That's the eighth team foul against Connecticut, so Foy will go to the line for a one and one. It's the second personal on Marcus Williams. Yeah, it's interesting all the mismatches. Uh, Ray was on Armstrong. They switch it here. Uh, you look to take advantage on occasion. You, pay, you don't pay attention, and there again, the ability to deflect. You got the ball on the left side. It, it was a simple inside hand change, but he got the ball again outside of his body. When you get it outside your body and don't protect it, you are going to lose it. These guys are that good. That was a measured play by Randy Foy. He studied him bringing the ball up court and just waited for that opportunity. Outstanding free throw shooter at 82%. Been to the line 106 times this year, leading their team. Entering tonight's action, senior from Newark, New Jersey. He's overcome a lot of adversity, lost both parents at a young age. His dad killed in a motorcycle accident. His mom disappeared shortly after he graduated from kindergarten. They're still not sure whatever happened to her, but they presume she is deceased. Lowry thought they had a steal. The officials did not agree. He was imploring uh, Reggie Greenwood, too. Now full court man to man, a different look again. Now you got look to protect that ball on the outside. Fire. But they're so good at coming from the rear. Uh, even in a half court, they know they're going to get coverage, but uh, you're not accustomed to this in practice, particularly UConn with their power type of attitude. Well, they get you going a little bit faster, but you've got to keep that ball. If you're going to dribble against that backflow, you have got to keep that ball in front of your body. And they are up. There's a tough match, I think, Sheridan on Anderson, particularly on the perimeter. Austria running the point now with Williams on the bench with two fouls. No basket. Whistle before. Might be Larry, Sean. He was banging up. I don't know if they gave it to him. It was Alan Ray, his first. Generally, for Jim Calhoun, when you get two fouls in the first half, you go to the bench and stay there. We have not seen Boone back since he went out with two fouls, and we probably won't see Williams either, but Austria experienced this season at the point, and that's a deep two for Rudy Gay. He can get any shot off he wants because of the, uh, the size differential. He can plumb Bob. He really understands how to take advantage. I'll tell you what, that pass, though, when they're throwing it long, they've thrown it a little flat. UConn's got to be careful that pass because Villanova's going to pick it off. Lowry exploded by Austria and laid it in. He disdained the use of the high pick. Very clever. And then a blow by. Now this Villanova team, they have guts. Looking to trap. They need to get it over. They just did. Shot clock was at 25 as that ball made it into the front court. And Hilton Armstrong fouled. 
Sean, this is unbelievable. They're expecting to go over the top. They show top side. The guard sort of sets up that way and just the blow by. And I love the way that we've got people on the floor, Jay. They're eliminating some assistance around the rim. He's just unbelievably explosive. He's got not just a great first step. He's got a pretty darn good second and third step, too. That's the way I feel late at night. Armstrong made the free throw. Shane Clark, a freshman off the bench. Jason Frazier goes out. That was his second foul in the fourth against Villanova. That was the first free throw of the night for Connecticut from Armstrong. That's one of the many areas in which he's much improved this year. 69% from the line. Career 57% free throw shooter. Did you see the story today? Billy Hahn, the old LaSalle coach, was the one of the few that gave him some uh, interest. He committed to LaSalle. Heard the great. Then academic institutions in the country, yeah. I might add. Could not live up to the legacy of Bill Raftery <laughs> at LaSalle, so. And then, of course, he's got better and better, and why not? Uh, Jim Calhoun came along, and he's just made himself into an NBA prospect. Terrific attitude and work ethic. A lot of NBA scouts here talk that Armstrong now is certainly a first-round pick, maybe even a lottery pick in the opinion of some teams. <laughs> Who would have thought that coming into the year? The steal by Lowry. He is controlling this first half. For Villanova. And he steps through and takes the guard one way and the big guy on his shoulder. What a heady play. And UConn continues to show the ball. Villanova by two. Gay's pass deflected out of bounds by Shane Clark. Jay, you were talking about the ability to deflect. They do understand how to assist as well. Be in position to help your partner out. And I just love this at the end here, Jay. It's just a great finisher, great strength. Again, the change of pace, the hesitation. But UConn, you know, I don't know how many turnovers it's going to take before these guys realize you cannot put the ball outside of your body. And I think they give a timeout here. Boy, Jay Wright wanted to travel. He wanted a held ball. He's going to get neither. Connecticut got the timeout. They'll have 20 to shoot when we come back. To speak to a customer service rep in English, press 9. To speak to a customer service rep about your account balance, press 36. Um, all right. To speak to a customer service rep about recent charges, press 26. To a customer service rep about finance charges, press 57. I'm sorry. Sometimes you just want to get straight through. That's why there's the City Simplicity credit card. Simply press zero to talk to a person. Better get down by two. The problem has been the turnovers. They've turned it over nine times. Villanova has 12 points off the Husky turnovers. And this was very nearly another turnover. It had to be, really. You come from down, up, or up, down, and uh, tough little call. They gave the Huskies the timeout. 20 seconds to shoot. Armstrong <laughs> went out to midcourt to field it. Hands it off to Austri. Denham Brown back in the game with Anderson and Adrian. Ten to shoot, four and a half to go in the half. Sean, when you, you're big, you got to take advantage. Right now they get the hold late. Seven seconds, Ray gets one. Get it inside, but again, disconcerting defense. Second foul on Allen Ray. Tomorrow night, ESPN has a college basketball doubleheader. Begins in the SEC, 7 Eastern, Alabama and South Carolina. But at 9 Eastern, Iowa takes on Maurice Ager and the Michigan State Spartans. What a great race in the Big Ten. Those two teams in the thick of it. Another steal by Villanova. And Lowry difficulty with the dribble. Instead, they'll set. Mike Nardi back on the court. Again, just the three guards as Alan Ray has gone to the bench with the two fouls. Clark and Sheridan in the front court with Lowry, Foy, and Nardi. Here comes the run out ball screen that's been really successful for Villanova. Nardi had it flicked away by Anderson. Shot clock at five. Foy nearly stripped by Austri. Clark rejected by Adrian. Great defense by Connecticut. Uh, they can step it up too. You don't become number one or have a program or sustain it like Calhoun has if you can't guard. They're number one in the nation in block shots, number three in field goal percentage in 
defense in the last NCAA statistical release. And there's Rashad Anderson for three in the lead for Connecticut. You know, the defenders flying at him don't seem to bother him. He just keeps his eyes right on the rim. And John's comment about daggers over his career. Incredible. Nardi. And now Foy. Nice out. Foy tripped. Boy, it looked like he collided the legs with Anderson. No whistle. And here come the Huskies with a chance to pad the lead with three minutes to go in the first half. They have not lost to a ranked team this year. Obviously, they have only one loss. That was to Marquette in Milwaukee. They're 7-0 against ranked opponents. And a charge called against Hilton Armstrong. His first foul. Timeout, 250 remaining in the first half in Philadelphia. Fans, your phone has arrived. company's money into software. Choose the software that's most likely to return the favor. SAP. Spicy, Spicy premium, premium chicken, chicken sandwich, sandwich please. please. Look who's trying to add some flavor to her life. Might take more than a sandwich. Hello? Find spice where you least expect it. McDonald's new spicy premium chicken sandwich. Tender real chicken breast with a bold blend of chipotle spices and fresh toppings on a honeyweed roll. The hot new flavor in the premium chicken line. Ba, 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 ba. I'm loving it. You know, I have genital herpes, but I don't let it hold me back. Ask your doctor about daily treatments that can reduce the number of outbreaks. It's been months since my last outbreak, and that's a great way to be. Dave Revson in the studio with Digger Phelps and Len Elmore. Coming up on the UPS Halftime Report, more details on the Eddie Sutton and Mike Davis stories. Thoughts on the first half so far? This game's going to come down to Villanova's quickness and ability to shoot the threes against what UConn did the last two games against Seton Hall as well as Syracuse, 110 rebounds. Boards versus quickness, Lenny. Well, Villanova's pressure defense has really taken the big men for UConn out. Kyle Lowry, 20 points, six rebounds in the last two games. He's just continuing to discover who he is as a player. Also, the half guys will debate who should be number one. At least one of these guys thinks it's not UConn. Sean? All right, Dave, thank you very much. Number one, UConn does have the lead by one here in Philadelphia. The image of Moses Malone looming over the proceedings. Connecticut trying to get to the promised land and win its third national title. Hard to believe their RPI is number five with that 22 and one record, but that's what it is. Well, Jay, the resume brought to you by CareerBuilder.com. Well, we tease Jay about being Bumble Boy. Uh, maybe he'll give us some insight during the course of the game. I mean, they, don't you think they're a, a, almost a lock for a number one seed? Yes. Well, if you're wondering, the four teams RPI better than Connecticut right now. Duke, Tennessee, Villanova, and Memphis. Connecticut doing a much better job containing on the perimeter. Dante Cunningham, the miss from the elbow, run down by Lowry. He's everywhere, 14 points, hasn't missed a shot yet tonight. From the floor, Ray, trouble on the dribble, got it back, and it popped out, tipped back up and in by Will Sheridan. Well, that's what Ray has to do. When you drive to the rim like that, it bears the glass, and good step in by Sheridan. Somebody's got to break into the middle of this 1-2-2 and be a receiver. 
So Jay, he's got to mix it up. He's been relying on the jump shot, but again, once you go to the rim, somebody slides over. Terrific read by the big fella, bumping his way around. Well, Villanova had not gone to the glass for three or four straight possessions. That time they did, and they caught UConn napping without blocks out, box outs. And you mentioned uh, handling the press. Williams was cutting the practice today into the middle. They have not done it with him off or out of the game. They came to blitz Austria, and he got rid of it to Denham Brown. That shot popped out. Ed Nelson's on the floor for the first time for UConn, number 32. Here comes Nova with a one-point lead in the ball, nearing a minute and a half to go. The shot blocked by Gay as Foy took it. Brown trying to blow by Dante Cunningham and could not. Why not get Gay involved with Foy on him over here? Just be patient and get it in. Well, that's when a guy like Rudy Gay should go down and post, but he's not he's not the type of player that wants to go into the post. He got away with a foul there, too. Yeah, Lowry bumped Austri from behind. There was no whistle, but Connecticut will play it in as Rashad Anderson comes back. He leads UConn with nine points off the bench on three three balls. Denham Brown to the bench. Nardi ineffective so far. And that's the good news for Villanova, I suppose, fellas. Nardi and Ray each ineffective, and yet they have the lead. Mm -hmm. well, Lowry has just had an outstanding game. Certainly has helped that factor. And plus, they've turned him over. And Live on the shot clock. Austria needs to get moving. Sheridan jumps out on him. Austria desperation. Shot clock violation. Uh, great sequence. Good solid D. Big show by uh, Nelson really helped the cause. That reminds you of the 2004 Final Four semifinals where Jim Calhoun kept Emeka Okafor out for most of the first half of that game. He's doing a similar thing with Marcus Williams here in this first half. Well, usually nothing falls off uh, because they're so deep. Lowry splits the defense again using the Sheridan screen. He's six for six from the floor. That shows you his speed. They tried to close. Great power to the tip. You talk about being dynamic off a of pick and roll. And they're really having problems without Williams on the floor. Look where they're initiating the offense. They can take it down just about to the first half buzzer. They're just trying to get it inside the three point line against this tenacious Villanova defense. Austria in trouble again with the shot clock at six. He's near midcourt. They blitz him. Armstrong at the buzzer wow. of the shot clock. Big shot by Armstrong to give Connecticut a lift going into the half when Villanova defended beautifully for 34 seconds on that Connecticut possession. Poised under fire by Armstrong. This is Big Monday in living up to that advanced billing. Villanova by one at the break. Here's Dave Revson in the studio with the UPS halftime report. Thank you, Sean. So two teams that want to combine 19 straight coming in. It has been a great one so far. Villanova and UConn. Dave Revson alongside Digger Phelps and Len Elmore. The UPS Halftime Report. Thoughts on the first half? I thought when Williams got a second foul with 6.32 to go, that was a difference because his leadership was missed on the floor. Yeah, they had a few turnovers before that, but the most important thing is Villanova's quickness on defense, their quickness to penetrate, and Lowry, Len, that's the reason why they just hung right around. And as you said, UConn's thinking of getting the ball inside because of that pressure. Well, they can't. I mean, what's happening now is that the big guys are really forced to kind of go from baseline, I mean, from free throw line to free throw line because of the turnovers, and they're thinking about getting back on defense before they ever get set on offense. But you're right. Kyle Lowry has discovered that he's a player. In Nardi's absence, he's stepped up the last two games. I mentioned before, averaging 20 points, six rebounds, and now he's just keeping it going. All right, lots more from these guys coming up in just a moment. There is some other news to get to, though. Oklahoma State coach Eddie Sutton has been cited for driving under the influence after that car accident on Friday. Now, under Oklahoma law, DUI can encompass a wide range of substances, anything from alcohol to medication, and Sutton is on pain medication. He has had a back problem for quite some time now. A blood test was done at the hospital, the results of which won't be known for six to eight weeks. Now, Sutton has taken a leave of absence for medical purposes from the team for the rest of the season. His son, Sean, who already has been named as his successor, will coach the Cowboys the rest of the way. No decision yet on whether Eddie Sutton will return next season.
Here is Sutton's resume, just six wins shy of 800, a number he would very much like to reach. He's fifth on the all-time wins list, second among active coaches behind only Bob Knight. Speaking of which, Bob Knight proving to be a very difficult act to follow in Bloomington for embattled Indiana coach Mike Davis, who said on Monday he might not be the guy to lead the Hoosiers program over the long term. Davis said he believes Indiana needs an Indiana grad at the helm of the program. Davis made these comments during the weekly Big Ten conference call, saying, quote, they need to have somebody that's played here so they can embrace him. Hoosiers 13 and 8 overall. They are 5 and 5 in the Big Ten. Well, coming up, we apply the full court press to Landon Digger. Who should be the number one team in the nation? A couple of differing opinions just ahead. UConn, Duke. Perhaps it should be Villanova based on early returns tonight. We'll discuss next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? my credit card miles they couldn't black us out forever <laughs> but dad it's summer what are you a weatherman all right who's up for a little double diamond last one down's a coward i'm okay <laughs> they need a capital one card for easy to use rewards get capital one no hassle rewards with no blackouts on any airline anytime kids look at that <laughs> what's in your wallet I have a talent agent, but he doesn't always come through. Look at her, Miss Antarctica. Here she comes, what a gal. Fortunately, my insurance agent always comes through. John have compared companies, and the best deal for you is drive insurance. Drive insurance? From Progressive. Only agents sell it. Sounds good to me. Sushi for lunch, Sparky? Drive insurance is sold only through independent agents. To find one, go to driveinsurance.com and relax. Just drive. Mrs. Sanders, we got you a little something. Really? Rare, 14th century Ming Dynasty. We all chipped in. Imagine getting great stuff just for being a customer. Now all DirecTV customers enjoy sweepstakes, discounts, and more in the viewer circle at directtv.com. Mr. Blunkett! Somebody up there loves you, DirecTV. Hello, and welcome to DirecTV. Since you're already enjoying great DirecTV service, if you're for a friend, you can get a $50 credit on your DirecTV bill. Terrific. Then spread the word. Refer a friend to DirecTV with the confidence that they're getting the best television. I have a lot of friends that complain about their cable service. Great. Sign them all up and get $50 off for each. There's no limit. Great. Tell all your friends about DirecTV, and when they subscribe, you'll collect your reward. Go to DirecTV.com for details. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Kyle Lowry, 16 first half points. Villanova up one on number one at the half in Philly. It's 33-32. Welcome back to the UPS halftime report. Dave Revson with Digger Phelps and Len Elmore. It is time to apply the full court press to these gentlemen and let's get right to it. And the question is, who should be number one? We know UConn is in the rankings. Digger, what do you think? I just really like UConn. I like the way they play. I know they got a battle tonight against Villanova. That's obvious. But go back to the last two games against Seton Hall and Syracuse. 110 points. Why? Gay, Boone, and Armstrong just make it happen inside on the glass. They know how to get things going from that direction. But the leadership of Marcus Williams, don't forget, he's only been back for 12 games since he's been eligible. And that's why, you know, him doing what he's doing, getting it done, it leads to J.J. Record. But leadership has got to be Williams. Well, I say Duke for now because they're blending smoothly. Two gamers, Reddick and Williams, averaging 
47 of the 83 and a half points that Duke is scoring. But the thing I, thing I like about them is their consistency within the dominance that they've been establishing. And they have a killer instinct. When they get you down, they don't let you back up. Uh, the RPI agrees with Lenny. Duke number one in the RPI. UConn, of course, number one in the polls. All right, how about high-profile teams in jeopardy and not making the tournament? Kentucky's really having a disaster the last couple of weeks. They've really fallen apart. When they lost at Florida on the road, that really set them back. And then they have two losses last week. But look at Kentucky, what's left. They're at South Carolina, at LSU, at Tennessee, and home with Florida. And what's broken down with this team basically is their defense and offense. They can't score, they can't hold teams down, and that's the difference. Well, my problem with Louisville is that at 16 and 8 and 4 and 7 in the Big East, they're in that 12th and last spot to go to New York. And if you don't go to New York, you're not going to the tournament. They need to finish 7 and 9 to even have a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. And in the end, they've got three on the road, two at home. They're paying for those losses at home earlier in the season. They've got to win the games at home, those two, and then steal one from Syracuse or UConn or West Virginia. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you want to have tough games if you're sitting in the position they are right now because when you look at the RPIs these guys have. I mean, they're AARP RPIs. You don't make the NCAA tournament with RPIs this, like that. Last but, time, but nothing this, against the AARP, no, but, don't but, get me but, wrong. But this yeah. is the time of the year. When your team is not mature now in the middle of February, you got some issues. And when you look about Louisville and you look about Kentucky, they certainly got certain issues. And you can't have that now at this time of the season. Uh, that's absolutely right. Last time, both those teams missed the tournament without one of them being on probation, 1965. So it has been a long time. All right, we've got number six versus number two in the women's game, Maryland and Duke. And you see Duke early on, Monique Curry hitting for them. It's 25-23. Now more for Duke inside as they tie this thing up at 25. And great anticipation by Harper. But Maryland coming up with the steal. Laura Harper with the lay-in puts them on top 29-27. Then it's Shea Dornick for Maryland. Remember, this is a Maryland team that lost to Duke by 18 in College Park earlier this year. Maryland's only two losses, in fact, to Duke and Tennessee. It's 41-33 in favor of Maryland at the half over on ESPN2. I see packages coming in from Shanghai today. Yeah, Oracle, I know. 200 hen. 80 from Portland tomorrow morning. What? It's UPS. See, now I get a detailed report of all their shipments coming in. Huh. I've already notified production and alerted sales. Well, I can't compete with that. Yeah, that's why you're being reassigned. To accounting. Oh, my stapler. Gotta get up. What's the emergency? Zathura coming to DVD. We're in outer space. Oh my gosh. Bursting with over 90 minutes of special features. Yes. It's a thrilling ride. Fun for the whole family. Starring Tim Robbins. Sounds like a lot of fun. Zathura on DVD and PSP Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Our chance to do some good out there with our two times Tuesday pizza deal. Our chance to rescue people from the average, from the mundane. Now let's show them what a free pizza can do. Let me get a hoo ha two times Tuesday. Hoo ha. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. It's two times Tuesday at Domino's. Buy any large pizza at regular menu price and get a second pizza of equal or lesser value free. Get the door. It's Domino's two times Tuesday. solutions from Siemens can be found everywhere. By making buildings more efficient, communications better integrated, medical centers more advanced, power plants and transportation more modern, we're turning dreams into reality.
This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Log on to ESPN.com. Vote for this week's big man on campus. You see the five candidates right there. In fact, six, Brandon Roy and Justin Denman, both from Washington, are on the list as a tandem. We'll tell you what everyone did coming up at halftime of Oklahoma State and Kansas, which is our 9 Eastern time game. We'll tell you the results in the second half of that game. Rashad Anderson's pretty good results in the first half for UConn. He has nine points for the Huskies. Down one to Nova at the break. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by TD Waterhouse, the alternative to higher priced brokers, and NikeBasketball.com. Show Daddy what you got. Did you call that? Get the stripe balls, you know, the balls with the stripe. Scratch, scratch, uh-oh. In a world of light beer, she's like... Just got a little darker. Introducing new Michelob Ultra Amber. With its deep amber color and full-flavored taste, it's the new look of light beer. Hey, you want to throw some darts? Excuse me, you're still with your old brokerage firm? I know, I know, but I like being able to talk to somebody when I have a question. Look, I don't want to be out there in cyberspace all by myself. We moved our money to a TD Waterhouse online account. Their people really make us feel connected. TD Waterhouse has investment consultants you can talk to when you have a question. So you're not out there all on your own. You can do this. Switch to TD Waterhouse, the alternative to higher priced brokers. Love me or hate me. It's one or the other. Always has been. Hate my game. My swagger. Hate my fadeaway. My hunger. Hate that I'm a veteran. A champion. Hate that. Hate it with all your heart. And hate that I'm loved for the exact same reasons. is born to build a vehicle that defies classification inspired by sports car design and propelled by a 320 horsepower engine this brave idea is called the FX and it's from a company called infinity in a world where one play can turn a contender into a champion comes a story of unparalleled pressure, and only those with nerves of steel will survive. At the buzzer! Oh! NBA League Pass presents a thriller where every second counts. Follow the ball. Be a part of the thrill. Oh, my goodness! Don't miss a minute of clutch NBA action. Oh! Order NBA League Pass from DirecTV now and save 40% off the regular season price. To order, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or visit DirecTV.com. People want to beat us. Everyone wants to be the team that knocks off the number one team in the country. Numbers don't matter to us. Doesn't matter. We play hard together, smart, and we play with pride. Well, as Jason Frazier said, Oftentimes the numbers don't matter, but here are the numbers from the first half, and a couple of interesting numbers jump out. We talked about the size advantage for Connecticut, but it's Villanova with the advantage in points in the paint, and they also use their quickness. They come up with nine steals, and they've done a good job of avoiding the shot blockers of Connecticut. Welcome back to Philadelphia. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, and Bill Raftery. Villanova with the one-point lead at the break, led by Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry has been absolutely amazing in the first half. He had 16 points. He went 6 of 6 from the field. He added in four steals. So dynamic off the pick and roll, getting into the paint, finishing over size. He has been absolutely fearless, and he has been a game-changer on the defensive end as well. Bill Raftery Lowry has been the difference. Well, Jay, uh, how about the shot blocking ability negated because of his ability to get to the rim? 
UConn averages nine sh shot blocks. They've got two. One's on a jump shot outside. Sensational, avoiding the big people, getting the little teardrop, the floater, and getting to the rim by the point. Jay's got his guys lifted. They have been solid. Look for Marcus Williams now to take over. He's got to run the show. They're much more efficient when he's on the floor. Played 12 minutes in the first half, then got his second foul. Moon also had two fouls. He's back in to start the second half, and Williams hit on the arm. As he put up the shot, Josh Boone played only nine minutes. Lowry leading all scores. He's the only player in the game so far in double figures with the 16. The foul called on Lowry his first, and he didn't think so. A double clutch in the lane by Williams, who's very clever getting in there. I think that's one of the important aspects of playing Connecticut. Control him. He's one of the few guys at all that uses the bounce to create. How about, how about Jeff Adrian coming into the game right now? What did Boone do wrong in 12 seconds? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. He may have winked. Tom Moore, their associate head coach, talking with Boone. Two out of two from the line there for Marcus Williams. Connecticut four for four from the free throw line. Villanova five for six. And the lead one for Connecticut. That's right. The best teacher you have is the bench. And that's why Calhoun goes to it. He's got people who come in and do the job. They learn quickly. And Adrian just inserted into the game with the defensive rebound. Marcus Williams. Bodies fly. Cunningham went down. No whistle. Rashad Anderson, a runner in the lane. Adrian skied but didn't get it. Sheridan did. Got numbers. Lowry pushed it ahead. Allen Ray for three. Way short. Barely scraped the rim. Cunningham blocked by Adrian. A great timing by Jeff Adrian. Wouldn't go for that early fake. And what was wrong if Cunningham brought it out, Jay? You know, he didn't have to go up. Rudy Gay, an NBA distance three. And a Bill Bradley follow through to let everybody know. He has 10. And Connecticut with five unanswered points out of the locker room to take a four point lead. They led by six in the first half. A nice double screen to get uh, Ray a look in the corner. Well, he's way off. That's another miss. He's now three for 11 from the floor. Adrian running the court, the dunk. And Jay Wright wants to put a stop to this. And Sean Gay made that play. He on the wing, he went to the rim, and then the dive to the tin for the strong completion. Sweetheart Brownie Blast. Sonic's got it, others don't. Treat your sweetheart to the sweet taste of chocolate brownies and cherries blended into a creamy frozen treat. Sonic's new Sweetheart Brownie Blast. And now swipe a credit or my Sonic card from your car. Only at Sonic. I came to Villanova as an 18 year old not knowing what I wanted to do. You don't just go through Villanova. Villanova kind of goes through you. Everyone here has some type of passion. Villanova has transformed me in many different ways. My outlook on things is very different. Villanova just changed my perspective on everything. My eyes went open to the fact that a difference needs to be made. And I'm sitting here now, 22, four years later, and doing things that I never thought I could do coming into Villanova. And I have the university to thank for that. You think plans. Office Depot thinks paper. You think locations. Office Depot thinks laptops. You think how to build your business. Office Depot thinks how to supply it. And now through Saturday, get 20% off on all Christopher Lowell brand furniture and chairs. So hurry in. You take care of business. Office Depot takes care of you. Taking care of business. Fred Meyer and Littman Jewelers have the perfect gift to celebrate your Valentine. A diamond ring for her right hand. Your choice, only $199 each through Valentine's Day. For all those special times. Fred Meyer and Littman Jewelers. Let me apologize again for uh, my coworkers. Uh, yeah. Working around here can be uh, very challenging. Uh, I think I told you before that I uh, work with a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> nice one, guys. I totally understand. I actually work with a bunch of jackasses. <laughs> no, thanks, guys. I don't really feel like drinking at lunch. Want a new job? We've got the most. CareerBuilder.com. A better job awaits. Seven unanswered points out of the locker room for Connecticut. They turned a one-point halftime deficit into a six-point lead. 
Well, we all talk about Rudy Gay doing so many things, Jay. His ability to run the floor, as we see him right here, takes Foy away from the play. They're thinking lob. Foy is frozen. And how about this? Right down the pump, Adrian, the, the coach is saying, hey, get back, everybody. This is great understanding to fill the lane. Well, you cannot jog back against UConn. You have got to sprint back, and somebody's got to sprint back to the rim, and that possession, it was Will Sheridan. Ten points for Gay. Averages 16 per game, but over the last four, he's averaged more than 20 per game. He's the Big East Player of the Year for the, the Player of the Week, rather, for the second week in a row. Preseason Cole Player of the Year in the conference with Jerry McNamara of Syracuse. Boy, a runner way short. Here come the Huskies. They're big and powerful, but they can also get up and down, and they do, and Gay had it blocked but fouled from behind by Sheridan. Boy, if he didn't try to tomahawk that, he wouldn't have gotten that block. They got Williams on the charge on that yeah, one. That's did. a tough play. wasn't on Sheridan. That's a tough play. It was on Williams after he passed off his third. He goes back to the bench. Yeah, because he's so important to this team, and this is one of those plays that now, maybe a play on a little bit late getting in there if anything very tough call for the lead guard but interestingly enough two blocks by UConn in the first half too early in this half so you're getting a little too deep and the response terrific by the Huskies well, that's a tough call for Marcus Williams oh. never looked like Alan Ray established initial guarding position Villanova taking some tough shots and out of bounds last touch by Sheridan after the miss by Foy Foy, Lowry, Ray, Frazier, and Sheridan for Villanova. Armstrong, Adrian, Anderson, Gay, and now Austrey running the point for Connecticut. And there's that three. That's a fast break. Great look. You mentioned earlier about filling the lane. Uh, that time, solid. I think they talked about that at halftime. They get the ball into the middle, and they get a look at a layup. Got a foul him to keep him from scoring inside. Sheridan got him with the body, so Armstrong will go to the line. Bill mentioned the story in the local paper here today. Armstrong not highly recruited while in high school in Peekskill, New York, had verbally committed to LaSalle and Coach Billy Hahn, but then in his senior year, he started to improve. Jim Calhoun saw him in January of his senior year. And Hilton Armstrong said he had no idea who Jim Calhoun was. One of his teammates said, don't you know who that was? He's one of the best coaches in the country, one of the best teams in the country of Connecticut. If Jim had known that, huh? There may not have been a follow-up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lenova still scoreless here in the second half, and Connecticut has taken its largest lead up by seven. The free throws identical, each five out of six. We got Jason it, Frazier pushing off. Uh, Adrian, I think, right? With Adrian, I mean? Yep. Frazier called for his third. And too many empty trips right now against a powerful opponent. Boy, Hilton Armstrong hit that baseline jumper right at the end of the first half, and that momentum seems to have carried through the locker room and back onto the court for the second half. Frazier's played sparingly lately. They've played a lot of smaller, quicker teams of late, and he doesn't match up well in those circumstances. How frighteningly good would Villanova be with a healthy Jason Frazier and a healthy Curtis Sumter? Probably be a different style of play, a more powerful type of team. Frazier was a great player in high school at Amityville in New York. Many thought he was the very best high school player in the entire country. And his year coming out, they're also playing without Curtis Sumter, all Big East forward. Bothered by me problems as well. Uh, and what's great about these two kids is how they've handled the adversity, and that's a tribute to them, families, and the coaches. Well, Austria just hit Lowry with an elbow as he tried to get away. Shot clock down to seven. Austria tipped up by Adrian, batted out by Sheridan, but Austria's in the right place. Lowry slapped it away. What a great move by Austria to dribble across the body of Lowry and then a three out of the corner by Rudy Gay. Well, he is shooting the ball higher than I can recall, Jay. I mean, the, the defense isn't right on him, but still the trajectory is incredible. Preparing for the future of these buildings. 11-0 run here in the second half for UConn. They had an 11-0 run in the first half. Armstrong rips the ball away for Connecticut. The double-digit lead now. Armstrong 
Little right-handed jump hook over Frazier. Uh, Jay's waiting for the TV timeout. This is one of those dangerous periods of the game. How about the pump fake and the ability of the big guy to get to the rim? Sensational by Armstrong. Well, they are just going right to their power game, and it's mostly because they're doing a good job of handling pressure. And that's the inability now. They're not making shots like that. The run is not going in. They're not getting steals, Villanova. Uh, but the scrappy play exhibited in the first half, which led to nine steals, this would typify it. But as you noted, Sean Austry with great body control. Villanova, eight straight missed shots. And as much as the defense has been terrific for Connecticut, as it so often is, their shot selection hasn't been particularly good either. Going back to the end of the first half, 15 unanswered points, and that run ended by Alan Ray. Well, what confidence Jay has in his players. Now, they've been around. First three of the night by Ray. They'll need more from him tonight. He is a prolific scorer, averaging 18 and a half per game. Denham Brown on the floor now for UConn, the senior from Toronto. Austria with Lowry right in his shirt. Austri, tough defense. Denham Brown went up too early for the rebound. Sheridan the board. Nova trying to get some momentum back. Foy, they left him for a second. Ray steps into a three. And Foy showed great patience. A lot of guys would have jacked that wide open one. He got heads turned and then kicked to his partner. Two great teams. It's like a heavyweight fight. They keep throwing punches, and then the other responds. How about that dribble by Armstrong? Tough shot by Adrian. Bodies fly. Foul called on Sheridan as he shoved Armstrong to the deck. The second foul on Will Sheridan. Timeout. Connecticut by six. Some people look like their dogs, but Tim Allen, he's about to become one. Last night I turned into a dog. Dad? Then I turned back into being human. Now he's got to go from family dog. All my dad cares about is having a son who's a football player. I've got to make this better. To family hero. Awesome. Or he'll be living a dog's life forever. Is there anyone who has not sniffed my... Tim Allen. <laughs> the shaggy dog rated PG. Oh! We're gonna have a new cheesy bites pizza, please. Are you ready, bites? Start popping. These bites were made for popping, and that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these bites are gonna pop right into you. The new cheesy bites pizza from Pizza Hut. A pizza with 28 poppable bites, packed with melted cheese. Eleven ninety nine for a large. Jessica, we'll have what they're having. <laughs> Do you believe anything is possible? I do. I work at Earthlink. I believe internet good can defeat internet evil. A world without spyware, viruses, or online identity theft. I believe in a place where our information can be safe. I won't stop fighting until we get there. We work at Earthlink. And we're making unbelievable things happen every day. It's time to start believing. Call now and get a great deal on Earthlink High Speed. Earthlink, we revolve around you. Life doesn't stand still. That's why Lowe's has showroom quality kitchens at prices that fit your budget and the largest selection of appliances in stock. Best of all, Lowe's installation program includes project management teams that take you from start to finish for worry-free on-time installation, all at a price you can afford. At Lowe's, improving home improvement never ends. Use your Lowe's card and pay nothing for 12 months on all purchases of $299 or more from February 8th through February 20th. Well, we mentioned this big Monday presented by Bud Light matchup resembles a title fight. And that's what you like. You're in luck right here tonight. As the pride of Providence, Rhode Island, Peter Manfredo returns to his hometown to take on fifth-ranked former world champion Scott the Sandman Pemberton. I guess that's because he puts his opponents to sleep. We call Bill the Sandman on our telecast. It's a super yeah, listening fight. listening to you, it does happen. The contender special, East Coast Pride ESPN2, live tonight at 9 Eastern, and as anticipated, the largest crowd ever 
in the state of Pennsylvania to watch college basketball game inside the Wachovia Center here tonight. 20,859. They set the record earlier this year against Syracuse. Their third game in the Wachovia Center. Typically they play most of their games on their campus. They're 2-0 and in this building this year. Syracuse and Louisville. They're on a run at the moment. But Cunningham turned it back over. Connecticut at 13 straight points to open the half. Allen Ray with back-to-back -back threes to get Villanova back within six. Josh Boone back in the game, fouled by Randy Foy. Well, good recognition by Denham Brown to get the ball inside to Josh Boone, who had a mismatch. And we talked in the first half about the inbound passes on out-of-bounds underneath by UConn. They've gotten a little lazy. They were flat. And then Austria throws it away on that last possession. Two fouls on Foy, five team fouls, so that's already an issue for Villanova. Gay drives by Cunningham. Oh, explosive, mixing it up. Well, you, Connecticut over the years has been great on inbounds uh, on the baseline. They do know how to score. Wouldn't you like to see Rudy Gay do more of that, put the ball on the floor and get all the way to the rim? I, I think he can do that much more often. Against smaller guys, too. He is explosive. Tough shot. There's, I believe, number five. If you count Cunningham's block earlier or on a pass. Armstrong blocked Will Sheridan shot. Connecticut with the ball up by eight. Gay, the pull-up. Mike Marty's back on the court for Villanova. Free ball to four. One on two. Austrian Armstrong blocked it. It almost went in the bucket. Cunningham all alone. Missed the putback. Hit the floor, but then his pass was deflected to Brown. And Bones the reason they got the ball. He ran the floor after the shot block. Ray, and then he was fouled by Brown. Ray the steal. Jay Wright can't believe there wasn't a goaltending call. I think that's what he's arguing when Armstrong went up for the block. They should still have had the bucket by Cunningham, who was all alone in the after action and missed. And just look at the hustle, Jay at Bone. I know it's a great shot block by Armstrong. Did not give up on it. In college, you can do this if it's on the way up. Yeah, there was nothing wrong yep. with that block. That was magnificent. And Denham Brown on the other end. You can't cross over right in front of these Villanova defenders. They've proven they'll take it from you. Allen Ray heating up an NBA three. He's made three in this half after an offer in the first. I tell you, you can't go under against these Villanova shooters or this guy. Leave him open. Anderson a miss. Gay crashed the board and knocked it out of bounds. The pick and roll has been killing UConn. Villanova keeps going to it. Rudy Gay gets caught going underneath. And Villanova burns him. Jay Wright has effectively used the side pick and roll, big on little, the run out screen, and it has really been effective all game long. Alan Ray is all nine Villanova points in this half on three threes. They're on a nine to two run after Connecticut scored the first 13 points of the half. Lowry with Ray. Nardi still on the court. Cunningham and Sheridan. Foy, their leading scorer, getting a breather. Ray open again for his fourth three of the half. And what a great read by Ray. The shortcut taken by Gay on the top side. He faded to the corner. Terrific analysis. They're a streaky three-point shooting team riding the hot streak to get back into it. After going down by double digits, Gay rattled out. Unlucky there for Connecticut. Nardi for three and the lead. Coming off the screen, Rudy Gay tries to cheat over the top, but he burns him with a great read to fade into the corner and ready to shoot when the ball arrives. Well, Tonsillitis, nevertheless, he doesn't have to talk, just knock down that deep nylon tray off the sick bed. And this team, Sean, you said is streaky. I mean, all of a sudden, settling deep, and I think UConn's changed how they're guarding them. But how about UConn on the offensive end, pulling up for a challenge jump shot instead of putting the ball inside. They've been settling for jump shots, playing fast and loose with the lead, and Villanova has burned them because of it. Jim Calhoun's Huskies open the half with 13 unanswered points. They went up by 12. Now they're down by one, a three-point blitz 
by Villanova. Nardi his first basket of the ball game to give them the lead back. They handle the press well. Anderson called for an offensive foul. Well, the danger of the press, you give Anderson an open opportunity. I was surprised he didn't settle. Just going a little further in makes it an easy call, but they will attack. Connecticut will not back off, Jay, when it comes to pressing. Well, great job by Will Sheridan, but I think that Anderson would have been better off pulling up for a three. Mm -hmm. They had somebody at the rim as well. Boy still on the bench. Three guards on the floor. Alan Ray's been sensational in this half. Trying to shed Anderson. Does shed him. And then missed. And the three ball wound up with Will Sheridan. They're just out scrapping right now, which is what you'd expect on anything below the rim with this Villanova team. A floater win goal for Williams. The rebound, Cunningham. What a turn in this game. It looked like Yukon might pull away. They had opened up a double-digit lead, and in the blink of an eye, they're down three. And Ray is fouled. And a timeout. And Jim Calhoun increasingly agitated with the officials. About to lose the sport coat. Time for a 30 at 30 update. Here's Dave Rebson. Thank you, Sean. Oklahoma State head coach Eddie Sutton has been cited for a DUI, which under Oklahoma law can encompass a broad range of substances. Results of a blood test will be known in six to eight weeks. Sutton will take a medical leave from the team for the rest of the season. And in battle, Indiana coach Mike Davis insinuated Monday that he's not a good fit at IU, saying, quote, they need to have somebody that's played here so they can embrace him. Details, Sports Center, 11 Eastern, ESPN News, anytime. Back to the game next. solutions from Siemens can be found everywhere by helping to make water more pure, buildings more efficient, facilities more modern, communications better integrated, and energy more reliable. We're turning dreams into reality. Oh, Testudo is huge. I mean, obviously everyone knows the tradition of rubbing Testudo's nose before every game. It's just a huge tradition here at Maryland. College game day fueled by Diet Dew Saturdays at 11 and 8 on ESPN. This February on DirecTV Pay Per View, a full month of love. Love. I love him. I love you too. I love you. I'm sorry. 24 hours a day. That's very impressive. For 28 days. It's going to be a wonderful show. All your favorite love stories. Generally, I like it. At a price you're really gonna love. 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 That's what I think. Romance begins on Channel 125 Direct TV Pay Per View, baby. Who says you can't buy love? It was just a minor misunderstanding. And down goes Tito. Fernando Vargas has the passion. Hardest butt to the fight. Stun dead oh yeah. Sugar Shane Mosley has the hunger. This is a dominant round for Gorgas. Hard right hand by Mosley. When these two warriors battle, there's no other way. Showdown. Vargas Mosley. Saturday, February 25th. Live on Direct TV Pay-Per-View. Don't miss Vargas Mosley. Live on Direct TV Pay-Per-View, Channel 123. Back in Philadelphia, raucous atmosphere for the record crowd inside the Wachovia Center. Villanova on a 17-2 run on the heels of a 13-zip run by the Huskies. And it's been mostly Alan Ray, the nice shot fake setting the feet and shooting with a defender flying at him. And again, the great read to the corner. I mean, this crowd is loving the play of Jay Wright's little guys. Five threes during this 17-2 run. Four of them by Ray. The other by Nardi is only bucket of the night, but it gave them the lead after they had gone down by 12. And Nardi will play it in for the full shot clock. Sorry, Sean. Tough matchups, really, for the perimeter people of UConn. They're getting free. They can't cover him. You know, here's a little zone look. 2-3. Ray back for Sheridan. Now Lowry with Nardi and Cunningham. It's 
Williams, Gay, Boone, Armstrong, and Anderson for Connecticut. And they go back to man now. Ray down on a knee and gets called for travel. He tried to get up. You yeah, can't get up when you're down. Looks like the shot that. Anderson was about to hold the ball with him. Instead, it's a turnover. I've tried that all my life, Jay. When you're down, trying to get up. Usually, you can't get up. We have to help you. <laughs> it's age. Armstrong guarded by Sheridan. Now Williams with Nardi on him. Ray is covering Gay. Yeah, Nardi's got to keep him out. That's the key. Look at this hold by Boom. Opens up the lane. And Marcus Williams took the clear path to get Connecticut within one. He has eight on three for seven shooting. All he needs to do is get his defender on his hip. And he is too strong to knock off the ball. Randy Foy getting ready to check back in. He's had a lengthy rest now for Villanova. Cunningham. Anderson on Ray, too, Sean. A little change defensively. Nardi with the shot clock at 10. 10 minutes to go. Lowry long with a three. Long rebound out to Ray in a new shot clock. And that's the one they've got to get. They can't compete around the rim. There's a run out ball screen. Deep three. From beyond the NBA arc. Gotta jump out there and trap that. Early dagger in the range. 23 24. Williams blocked by Sheridan was boom. A taste of his own medicine. Nardi thought about an NBA three. Sheridan at the other end. Well, that's confidence. Jay letting him take that space out jump shot, and the guards respond. Nova has matched its largest lead of the night. And that's just going under again. No show. You mentioned trapping it, but how about this for the big guy? Confidence. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I feel like I should register, pay my hundred bucks, pick up my clipboard, because Villanova's putting on a pick and roll clinic. Yeah, we talked about Will Sheridan as a role player, but more and more as you talk to coaches around this conference, they respect him as more than that. He is a critical component on this Villanova squad. The three ball has come to life after Ray in particular struggled from beyond the arc in the first half, 0 for 5. He's shooting them like their layups now. 22 to 4, the run. On the heels of the 13 nothing run by Connecticut which opened the half and gave the Huskies a 12 point lead. Anderson wide open for three big time and Williams gets the delivery. Plenty of time to step into it. That's the danger of the full court pressure. That's a Rashad Anderson layup. Earlier this year he scored in double figures in 11 straight games all of them off the bench. Ray did a little more screening to free himself. Ray steps in a little closer, and there's Sheridan again with the follow. Well, the little guys may hurt you, but he bites you. The Sheridan taller than the Hilton. <laughs> and there's Adrian. He's been terrific Jim off Jim Calhoun's bench. He says, this Coach Calhoun, that Adrian is the biggest surprise in the Big East this year. Unheralded as a recruit out of Brewster Academy in New Hampshire. Went there to improve his chances to play big-time college basketball after getting only mid-major interest in Brookline, Massachusetts. And Kyle Lowry called for the offensive foul. I would go with Gray, though. Job he's done at Pittsburgh. But Adrian, nevertheless, one of those guys that keeps the rotation deep and strong. He posts up, and next year he'll get the ball a little more often. 16 foul on Villanova. Second person along Lowry, who's been held in check in this half after he was fantastic in the first half. Williams driving on the much taller Cunningham. Nice help here. That's what Lowry does beautifully. Now they scramble. Sheridan again gets his hand on the pass as Williams tried to get out of trouble and couldn't. Under eight minutes to go. Villanova with the ball in a three-point lead. Sheridan the pick for Nardi. Sheridan is open. It is his show at the moment. And all set up by great use of the bounce by Nardi. Drew his guy, timed it, and then kicked it. 
10 for Will Sheridan. He averages four and a half per game, a junior from Bear, Delaware. Williams trying to blow by Nardi. Cunningham got a hand on it. Or did he? No, Reggie Greenwood says it was not touched. The shot just went over the backboard. Villanova will play it back in. Will Sheridan out of the shadows, into the spotlight, and Villanova with a five-point lead. Ted Fergus, Bud Light Daredevil. Today for Bud Light, I'll tip my most difficult stunt so far. I will stay two full minutes past five on a Friday. Hey, Ted. See you, Janice. Hey, time. Get him up. 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 Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Put that on my review. Oh, yeah. Kids dropping out of sports, becoming overweight, um, and generally being unhappy is, I believe, a result of having success defined for them, the success measured by the very best people. Obviously, that's the success that ends up filtering down to those kids, and they start to realize when they're 8, 9, 10 years old that if they can't win, they shouldn't play sports. And I think that's an unbelievably unhealthy attitude for sports, for parents, for kids. I think we're, we're facing the, the wrath right now of years of doing that. Hi, it's Daddy. I'm on my way to the airport. I'm going to see you soon. Okay, I'm at the airport now. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, I got you a present. It's me again. I'm about to get on the plane. So I'm going to see you real soon. I love you. She's not on the couch again, is she? Susie? You're not on the couch again, are you? That's Italian leather. And you know leather's a no-no for you. I'm not going to go. We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. And when you fly American, get our lowest fares at AA.com, guaranteed. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Refreshingly Smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Women's action over on ESPN2. Number six, Maryland. Ooh, number two, Duke. Shea Duran for Maryland. Hitting the three to put the Terps on top. Duke back on top, though, right now. Remember, Maryland beat number one Carolina Thursday in a battle with number two Duke. Up next, Mario Chalmers in Kansas. The freshmen are coming together. Seven straight wins, 14 of 16. They face Oklahoma State next. All right, Dave, thank you. It'll be interesting to see how Oklahoma State responds to the circumstances involving Eddie Sutton. Gone for the rest of the year. Well, Sean Sutton taking over for his dad, and that is something that at some point, we hope it's not too soon, will be a permanent change. But Eddie Sutton, one of the great coaches in college basketball, you certainly wish him the best as he goes through this difficult time. Yeah, absolutely. Personal difficulty. And uh, Sean, uh, I would guess next year, maybe the year after, let's see what happens as it plays out. Well, Eddie Sutton has said, Actually, uh, he said it to me last year. He really wants to get 800, and I was very surprised at that. He's six away from it right now. That's been a goal of his, and hope he gets it. And matching up defensively has been the dilemma. Yeah. Randy Foy to Sheridan, and maybe the timeout pulled him off. <laughs> Seven minutes to go. Villanova by five. Connecticut led by 12 earlier in this half. Marcus Williams, tough pass retrieved nicely by Anderson. Williams open with Foy lunging out. Rebound. Frazier hits the floor and a held ball. It'll go back to the Villanova Wildcats. Just getting the ball inside really collapsed that defense. Even if the inside guy doesn't take a shot, it's good for UConn to throw the ball into the post. And a great look they got out of it with Williams. Jay Wright trying to get some minutes out of Frazier. Such a well-respected player in this program. Highly touted recruit, devastated by injuries. Instead of thinking about an NBA future, he's now thinking about a future in social work and the ministry. Very religious young man, and that's helped him through all the tough times that he has had to endure personally. 
played 11 minutes tonight, more than he has of late. And this is the tough matchup, I think, gay on anybody, simply because he's got to get down and contain guys who are quick, and in this case, powerful Foy. Five on the clock. Lowry lost control of the dribble as he went to spin. Three on one, Connecticut. Gay into Foy. Nice body control, huh? Not charging. Got the ball at the right time. That's what makes this point guard special. Here come the Huskies again, back within three, under six minutes to go. Villanova's won eight in a row. They're 19 and two. Connecticut has won 11 in a row for the second time this year. They're 22 and one. First place in the Big East at stake. They're part of a three-way tie. These two teams with West Virginia at the moment. Sheridan doing his part to keep Villanova top the standings. A sleepy giant, and when you can shoot a jumper, Armstrong out, the little blow by and strong send it in. And how about Jason Frazier essentially with the box out screen to open up that baseline for Sheridan. Anderson's three went out of bounds. Will Sheridan has scored the last eight points for Villanova. He averages four and a half per game for the year. Well, I, I like the last jump shot that he took simply because Jay was riding him. He makes a few in a row. Give him an opportunity. Look at those numbers. Bordering on a double-double by the big fella. A His double season high is 13, and that was against Longwood. Yeah, and you're talking about arguably the best front line in college basketball, certainly the biggest. Lowry found Sheridan. Armstrong alert to that baseline jumper that time. Ray to the left hand. And it rattles in. Well, that is what he should do more of when you can shoot the ball like Alan Ray. Under five minutes to go. Gay in the lane. Fouled on the arm. That is a big whistle. Randy Foy didn't think they hit Gay. And they had caught it on Foy, and that's his third. It's Big Monday, one of the biggest in memory, presented by Bud Light, two of the top four teams in the country. Playing for first place in the Big East as we head down the home stretch. West Virginia part of the three-way tie. They had a big win yesterday at Georgetown. They will entertain Connecticut on Saturday in Morgantown. And these two teams meet again in 13 days. In the nutmeg state. Gay's free throw popped out. This is the biggest lead for Villanova. Seven points, 452 to go. Frazier to the bench with Ray. Nardi back in. Uh, George Wayne, the assistant, uh, Jim Calhoun, is telling me the difficulty with Villanova is the non-traditional attitude or approach of their offense, and I think it's really impacted on Rudy Gay's matchups. There's George Blaney, one of the great assistant coaches in the country, he had a terrific run as a head coach as well at Stonehill and Holy Cross, Seton Hall, very valuable member of Jim Calhoun's staff. Nearing four and a half minutes to go after two misses by Gay from the line. Villanova with a chance to give itself the biggest lead of the night. Foy nearly slipped. Cunningham with three to shoot. Sheridan with the left hand, the rebound, Denham Brown. Good job defensively by UConn. Williams with Lowry badgering him. Well, how about the walk? How about Lowry? He's all over. What an impact player. And he's matching up against Boone. Now they switch it now. And it should be Lowry. Yeah, he bodied him. He was trying to deny that high-low pass down to Josh Boone. And he gives away 10 inches in that matchup. Lowry called for his third and the team's eighth. It'll be a one and one opportunity for Boone. Tomorrow night, another doubleheader. It starts in the SEC at 7 Eastern time on ESPN Super Tuesday, Alabama and South Carolina, and then Michigan State and Iowa in a critical Big Ten matchup. Boone is not a good free throw shooter. He missed the front end. He's 54% for the year. Under four minutes to go. Sheridan. What a pass. To Cunningham. Blocked by Armstrong. What a save by the big fella. Williams. Little stutter step. Williams to the rim. Blocked from behind by Cunningham. Two on one. Foy with Nardi. Armstrong intimidating back and blocked it. What a great job. I thought Nardi should have drawn him and then dished. What a Philadelphia block party we got going. Under three and a half to go. Nova with the chances to widen the lead, but the defense and the shot blocking huge for Connecticut. Boone inside again. 
And the number one team in the nation back within five. What a great shape up by Boom, but what a delivery by Armstrong who has stepped up magnificently. If UConn wants to win on the road, this is about stops more than anything. That's what they've done when Villanova had a couple of chances to pad the seven. Oh! Floyd from right in front of the bench. And Gages could not get out on him. It's not within his ability, size, differential, to speed. Rudy Gay couldn't believe it when that shot went in. That was deep of deep. And Foy's had a relatively quiet night. He averages 20. This three gives him 10. But that's a very timely three. He had missed seven straight shots and had the confidence to take that shot from beyond the NBA line. The largest lead of the night now for Villanova with under three to go. I tell you, you probably, when you played, played guys smaller, but probably not that much smaller. And initially, Gay's all right. But then when the ball's released and he comes back for it, he's sliding under, he's late. And I realize it is deep, but these kids can knock him down. Well, he's got to give ground on that drive. And when he gives just a little bit of ground to take away the drive, these guys can pull the trigger and shoot over late pressure. And Rudy Gay, oftentimes with those long arms, he can get late pressure on a shooter. That's going to bother him. These guys are absolutely amazing with the shots that they can make under pressure. And drag you away, too, from the lane. Not only is Villanova thinking about beating the number one team in the country for the fifth time in school history, four and 14 all time against number ones, they're thinking about being the number one team in the country. As we look down the home stretch of this college basketball season, they played two other number one teams since that win in stores in 1995. Duke in 97, Connecticut in 98 and lost both so this is their third try at another win over number one since that victory under coach Steve Lapis in 1995. And of course the shot of Roley there at 85 won it all and looking at him in this Roley would not let guys take these kind of jump shots Sean I'll tell you that. Villanova seven out of nine from beyond the arc in this half after they were two for ten from three point range in the first half. First time they trapped. Yeah. Adrian Williams got Sheridan in the air. There's their scramble. Frenetic defense causing the Huskies problems. Williams missed a shorty. Got through that defense. Gay, the acrobatic spinner. Gay again. Uh oh, tough effort. He took something in the eye, I believe. Without a whistle, it gets Connecticut back within six. Gay still uncomfortable, grabbing at his head. Nearing two minutes to go. 19 and 9 for Gay. Cunningham, tough pass. Gay got in the way. 18 to shoot. Be smart. Not right with the clock, Sean. Foy with Nardi, Ray, Cunningham, and Sheridan. 10 to shoot. Under two minutes to go. Ray drove past. Williams dumped it off for Sheridan. He missed a short one, but was fouled. Hilton Armstrong called for his second. Timeout. The free throws, big free throws from Sheridan when we come back. You think plans. Office Depot thinks paper. You think locations. Office Depot thinks laptops. You think how to build your business. Office Depot thinks how to supply it. And now through Saturday, get 20% off on all Christopher Lowell brand furniture and chairs. So hurry in. You take care of business. Office Depot takes care of you. Taking care of business. First Valentine's dinner? Definitely. <laughs> This Valentine's Day, give her the Leo Diamond from K Jewelers, the very first diamond to be independently certified for its superior brilliance. Handcrafted by the master diamond artisans at Leo Schachter and hand selected to match beautifully by K Jewelers. Remember when we were like that? Yes, I sure do. Every kiss begins with K. The next time you put your company's money into software, choose the software that's most likely to return the favor. SAP. 
That is great. Mmm. Dynamite. Wonderful. That's awesome. Women love chocolate. I want some Russell Silver's for my Valentine's gifts. Don't give her just any chocolates. Give her Russell Stover chocolates with the famous Russell Stover bow. Introducing Mobile ESPN. Sports fans, your phone has arrived. James on Curry started the year with a flourish, has struggled at times in Big 12 play, needs a big performance as Oklahoma State looks to halt Kansas's seven game win streak. That's up next, Sean. The first, the completion of our first game of the night on Big Monday, presented by Bud Light, and the largest crowd in the history of college basketball in the state of Pennsylvania has been treated to a dandy between these two outstanding teams. Will Sheridan, the star of our Nike game track, his first double-double of the season against one of the best front courts in the country, and a chance to pad that 12-point total. His season high is 13 against Longwood. His rebound high is 11 against Stony Brook. They're not playing Longwood and Stony Brook tonight. No, not at all, and he's a very good free throw. He should be, too. Josh Boone, a spectator at the moment. The lead seven. And Sheridan will have the second of his two. 68% from the line. He had not attempted a free throw in the previous four games. That's how little he has been involved in their offense of late prior to the night. Nice hit, head and shoulder. And Williams, the finish. Oh, quick hitter. The left hand is he good at getting into the cracks. Now Connecticut has fouls to give. They've been called for only five team fouls, so they can play aggressively here. A minute and a half to go. Villanova by five. Jay Wright wants him to run some time. And also at the end, they use that drive. We saw Ray do it earlier and find people. Sheridan. Ray with Adrian helping out on him. Good job by Adrian to spring out that ball screen. Now they need to get going toward the bucket. Ray, a short runner. Adrian, the rebound, and he's fouled. Cunningham went over his back. Villanova is over the limit. That's the ninth team foul to be the last one and one shot by UConn. And Adrian is a 68% free throw shooter, and the freshman in the most pressure packed spot of his brief career. And why, why foul? Yeah, not a, him, you know, so stop the clock. And you walk 94 feet and give him a chance to score with no time going off the clock. Jeff Adrian off a great performance Saturday in their route of Seton Hall. He had 12 points and eight rebounds. Free throw box out here is huge. Adrian long and the rebound by Alan Ray. He came from the outside position right down the lane. And they are guards are good rebounders. They have to be out of necessity because they play with three guards almost all the time oftentimes four guards and it's amazing with that deployment through most of the year they are plus 2.5 rebounds per game and they've out rebounded seven of their ten opponents in the Big East this year and Lowry and Ray get four and Foy gets five he is as Jay mentioned great squeeze on the side he just took advantage why is Hilton Armstrong retreating I mean this juncture don't you have to go after that offensive rebound maybe he thought he was gonna slip around or drop step I don't know if it was much retreating Free throws have not been a factor in terms of the volume for either team, but Connecticut only five out of ten from the line, and that has hurt their 70% free throw shooting team for the year. Including the ball, 104 to go. Well, including in that five for ten, they missed two front ends. Nardi, Ray, Foy, and Lowry. Now they do have the four guards on there. Good ball handlers and good free throw shooters all. Still the two fouls, one foul to give to get to six. And the seventh would put Connecticut at the limit. And Ray's been able to beat Williams with the dribble. And of course, Lowry feels he can beat anybody. Ten to shoot. 43 to play in regulation. Lowry strong to the goal. Missed it. Gave the rebound. Got to find Anderson here. Yeah, just go to the rim. 
Williams, the pull-up. He's been big down the stretch. Connecticut within three and a timeout from Jim Calhoun. Pretty good job by Villanova to find Rashad Anderson, but this is just a terrific point guard, Marcus Williams, and that is a difficult shot to pull up from about eight or nine feet and drain that on the move. They're within three. Let's take a look at our KFC three-point bucket. There could be a bigger three to come than the 16 we've seen made by these two teams tonight. And that's been the key to the success of the second half for Villanova after a two for ten from beyond the arc in the first half. So again, fellas, you would think Connecticut would be going for a, a steal. Then they can foul once without a free throw for Villanova. The winner technically alone in first place they would move to 10 and one West Virginia nine and one but there would be only two one loss teams left in the Big East Conference standings. A big thing here is now to probably trap and maybe cause it to ideally get a five second call. Uh, they're fronting all over the floor. You can face guard you can switch everything and Sean's right you have that foul to give so it means be aggressive for that steal. Connecticut has no timeouts left. Villanova has two. Foy got it across. Ray will pull it out. Keep the ball moving. Yep. They can foul once. They you should. Foul. Sooner Ray, they're going to want to foul and put them on the line if they have to. Foy calls for a timeout. 21.1 to go. The shot clock off. One timeout left for Villanova and none for UConn. And a lot of time taken off on that particular trip. Ten seconds. So uh, they, they had the perfect trap in the corner. Give it right away. Take away the sideline. Push him out. But Foy wouldn't allow himself to no. be trapped. I mean, he's so quick and strong with the ball. They couldn't get there in time to trap him along the, the sideline. Well, the small guys are so clever, too, for Villanova. They're very difficult. Just look at what UConn has remaining at West Virginia this weekend, Sean. And then uh, down the road. Notre Dame at home, Villanova at home, at South Florida, and then Louisville in Connecticut before the Big East Tournament. UConn number one in the country, that ranking in danger. And they're perched atop the Big East standings in danger, down by three, and it's Villanova's ball. The four guards out there with Sheridan. Oh, Marty broke to the basket wide open. A smart going to the backcourt, though. You could use all that time back there if they don't give it up as they eventually do. There's the foul to give by Williams. So the next one will be the one and one. That's the 16 foul. And the personal for Williams, his fourth. And taking him out for that reason. Uh, they get the ball and go right back in. They don't want if they're going to end up giving up. And they're holding. Look at wide open. Wide open. Oh. Turned down a layup that could have iced the game perhaps. Well, that's one you got to take. Yeah. Right? I, I don't know if he looked over his shoulder. It was a teammate. Maybe in his own mind it could have been defender. But also the coach is saying, hey, we got the clock. Let's take advantage of it. But you're right. Oh, you got to shoot this, don't you? Well, yeah. you know, There's nobody else in the lane. Five point lead with 15 to go. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. I'm with you, but again, the fear of somebody on his back shoulder, maybe he didn't have good vision. Well, you drain these two, and it's a mood issue. And he is an excellent free throw shooter, 82%. Doesn't go there a lot, only 28 attempts for the year. It's a one and one, and he missed it. Out of bounds to Connecticut. Now, here we go with 14. Three point play, something you'll think of. Give the foul or not give the foul. Well, so you don't often, give it with 14. No, no, I'm just saying at the proper time. If you can get a foul, seven. if you can get a foul under five, you take it. Otherwise, I think you rely on your defense. You've got really one gigantic three-point threat, and that's Rashad Anderson. I'll and take my chances with the rest. And the other thing, looks like they're going to end up for the three. You must foul on the dribble if you're going to give it. Williams ran into his own man. Ball's alive. Ray saves it. He is fouled, grabbed by Armstrong. That should do it for Villanova. They jammed up the high pick and roll. What an alert group of performers. Causing Williams to have some problems. Again, it was the defense of Lowry forcing Williams into Rashad Anderson. I think Rashad Anderson was in the just way trying really. to, well he's just trying to look like break out to the line and went a little bit early almost uh, Ray did a nice shot too of jamming it up just a little bit then fanning out uh, that sort of describes Villanova though anything loose they felt they had to get 
and frequently they did get whether it was off of steals deflections or great anticipation one and one for Ray and you'd expect him to make it 90.5 percent one of the best free throw shooters in the country that should do it for Villanova his first free throw of the night he has had a mammoth second half leading the comeback with those four three balls in their 17 to 2 run after they went down by 12. Villanova has its fifth win ever against the top ranked team in the country. Their first since 1995. Connecticut was the victim on that night as well. And their first ever win over number one at home in their final game of three here at the Wachovia Center. The rest of their action will be on campus in the pavilion. And one of the reasons, Bill, they only play three games in this building. If you play more than that, it becomes considered a home court. You can't play in the NCAA tournament here. They hope to be sent here to Philadelphia in first and second round action. This win big. might be a big step back toward this court in March. While everybody talks about size, they put it in the program. They don't put heart there. And this team just responded. We always talk about the little guys, but how about Sharp Will? He's fanning out the jam off the of penetration. Just sensational. Rudy Gay and the Huskies suffer just their second loss of the season to Marquette and now Villanova. It ends their 11 game winning streak. That's been the unlucky number. They started the year 11 and 0 before that loss to Marquette. Won 11 more in a row and then fell tonight. They go to 9 and 2. And right now, third place in the Big East, Villanova, the preseason favorite to win the conference, alone at 10 and 1, ahead of 9 and 1, West Virginia. And Connecticut will drop down behind the Mountaineers with their 9 and 2 mark. Georgetown and Pittsburgh trailing UConn. Wild scene for the largest crowd ever in the state of Pennsylvania. 20,859, and the celebration will go long into the night. A lot of these people had to shovel out to get here. This area hit with about a foot and a half of snow. And they're glad they made the effort. Here's Jay Billis with Jay Wright. Jay does. Oh, he's getting all the congratulations. Does this team prove more than any other you've had that size really doesn't matter in this game? We got a lot of heart. Our guys are really tough. I give Connecticut a lot of credit. They just keep coming at you. They never quit. They're a great team. They're champions. And I'm proud of my guys to beat a team that's that good. Well, we always talk about your guards. A Kyle Lowry was great to start. Alan Ray in the second half. But talk about Will Sheridan, your unsung hero. You're right. I think teams pay so much attention to our guards. Finally, Will got so open, he had to go make plays. He did a great job in the second half. Will was really carrying us in the second half and rebounding. You know, when your team looked like it was struggling there at the start of the second half, what did you tell them when you got the timeout? I just said we're not playing Villanova basketball. They're, they're playing like champions. They, they came out to start the second half like champions. We came out like it was a walk in the park. And you can't play that way in the Big East. What, what does this win mean to your program and mean to your kids? You, you can see this. This is great. It's great for our fans. Villanova's got great tradition, and it's it's great for them. But for us, we got we got Georgetown coming up. We got to take it one game at a time. We're gonna see these guys again. Well, Sean, a, an amazing atmosphere in this building. Let's send it back to you. The fifth win by Villanova over number one. Well, Jay Wright. Humble as usual, but he pushed all the right buttons for his team tonight. Final score, Villanova 69, Connecticut 64. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now for Bill Raftery and Jay Billis, Sean McDonough saying good night from jubilant Philadelphia. Let's go now to Ron Franklin and Fran Fraschilla, Kansas and Oklahoma State. Okay, Sean, thanks so much tonight. The 20